Welcome to Game Wilder, a collaborative storytelling collective building a world one game at a time. This week, we will be playing The Ground Itself by Everest Pitney. If you like what we do here and want to get involved, follow us on Twitter at GameWoven, where you can join our Discord and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Denizens of Zalo Valley turned their spiritualism inward, flora and fauna took up long forgotten weapons, and the Undying Empire left behind iron and bronze for new steel blades. A storyteller told a brazen truth. We will not have peace in our land until those who bring war are gone. When she took up her spear, she had become the first of the bronze-eyed warriors soon to be called the Brazen. The brazen were a blessing and a curse. Zalo Valley, at long last, had a fighting force with the strength and will to oppose the Empire. However, the militant became the vain. Archduke Vladislav Zanikostovich saw it as an opportunity to solidify political control of the Blood River Bend and wed his third daughter to the son of a leader among the brazen. The Archduke's disappearance shortly thereafter made little difference. So long as the annual tithe of bronze-eyed soldiers was met in full, the brazen could rule their little valley how they wished. Then, at long last, the citizens of Basburg revealed themselves to the wider world. They too had warriors with eyes of bronze, but a bronze dulled green by flowing water. When the 900th year since the battle drew to a close, a brazen Marathonian ruled at the pleasure of an absent Archduke from a horrid beer hall. The Empire robbed Zalo of its runners and its children to claim them as their own. But this would not stand, for the seeds of rebellion took root among the Arrowroot reeds and spread down secret tunnels. We will see the sun. It will help the little things to grow. If another dark century must be suffered by the ground itself, we will see the sun. Welcome back to Game Woven, everyone. We're getting ready to wrap up the ground itself. But first, we have to figure out what time scale we're operating on. Here we go. It's a five centuries. No. Ooh. Okay. Uh do we want to go forward centuries or backward centuries? So where we left off, we were at about 900 years. We had we had done about 900 years of history in the Bronze Hollow Bay. So we would either potentially go forward 1d600 years or backwards 1d600 years, fleshing out what's going on in like those intervening centuries we had just kind of been doing. It'd be nice to have an even 1,000 years to cap this off. True. I like that idea. A thousand years of history. I like that. So if I get a one or a two, we've basically got a millennia covered. Yeah, baby. Here we go. Here we go. It's a one. Hey! Okay. We have exactly one. We are covering exactly one thousand years of history. So, following the assassination of the bridge caller. Now we haven't actually established whether the Basberg bridge call the ba the ba the Basberg bridge caller. Uh-huh. You good? You all right? <laughs> no, I'm not. You see, the Basburg bridge collar bit the bullet, and that was really bad for the <laughs> for a whole bunch of them. <laughs> that broke bad in a big bad way. Oh no. Mm. We haven't established whether the Basburg bridge collar actually could call the bridge or if that individual was a mere charlatan, but that doesn't matter because this this person has been assassinated assassinated. We are now 100 years in the future. Lex, did you get your end of phase question do you think i remember anything that happened i'm 99 <laughs> sure no. i literally took notes and i have no clue what we talked about <laughs> okay 
Okay, no, the last note I took is it's gay. <laughs> uh, uh, great note. Ten out of ten. Good way to figure this out. Ben, is there a question about an important person dying in the end of phase questions? Yes, someone important dies. Yeah, we did answer it. We did do it. All right, we got it. Okay, so lightning round really quick, and then I'll start drawing cards. Do our characters slash civilization still live here 100 years after this event, when the Basberg Bridge Caller gets killed? Oh, I don't see why not. I've stuck it out this far. Yeah. What does this place physically look like now? Has anything visually changed? Ooh. Mm. Now, hear me out. Uh-huh. It's like a floodplains as the dam that was blocking the river burst. So now we're in like a marshy floodplain vibe. Uh, okay. That is a valid thing, though we did establish that the river magically was not doing anything weird after the dam was there. True? Yeah. Right, right. And so my pitch is the dam stopped being there. Mm. And then the river was like, oh, this is what you've been missing. And just, Whoa. this is what you've been missing. <laughs> the <laughs> <trophy> <laughs> <went>. <laughs> this could be us, but you play in. <laughs> Does this place still use the same name? If not, what is it called now? Well, it's a marsh, so it's probably the Blood River Marsh. Bronze or Bronze marsh. Hollow Marsh. Or the Bronze Hollow Marsh, or just the Zalo Marshes. Zalo Marsh. The Zalo Bog. Ooh, Zalo Bog. Bronze Bog. Sounds like a game. But see, now my brain's going, what's the technical definition of a bog? <laughs> True. It has to do with the pH level of the water. See, okay. I did know that, and I forgot it until you said that just now. Yeah. Um, these these folks who got drowned, they they spicy or are they basic? Well, so I believe <laughs> this isn't going to be a wetland because it's not ocean adjacent. So we're not looking at like a marsh. I think I think this is going to be a swamp because it's fresh river fed. I'm down to still just call it the Zalo Bog, even if it's technically not a bog. But we can also say it's the Zalo Marsh, if it, if we want to be accurate. <laughs> it all depends on who you ask. Oh, Zarsh. 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 Zarsh, Scoob. <laughs> oh, no. We'll let the locals decide, I guess. Rob, it is time for your card. Oh, my. You have gotten a two. Now, how funny would it have been if you just immediately drew a 10 and it was like, oh, well, that's the episode. Well, that's that's the game. Game. <laughs> so, real talk, I did check. <laughs> <laughs> I did make sure that there was an hour's worth of deck stacked. You stacked the deck? I put but my finger Benjamin. on the scale just a little bit. That's showbiz, baby. Okay. A major modification is made to the environment. What is this change? Was it made by someone or did it simply come to pass? I feel like you just did this. Yeah, I think so as well. So I think what I'll do is we'll do a quick focused situation because we already answered the question and I feel like we can let that stand. For the folks at home, focused situation options are to tell a story, throw a party, discover something, see an omen, leave the frame, or move on. I'm going to discover something. Ooh. The former Basburgians who survived, there had to have been a diaspora of the Basgard Basburgians tarnished because they lived under the river, and now it is. That place is definitely gone. So I'm going to say that while... Some of them, like, settled in one of the places that are still around. Some of them followed some of the tributaries that had been now created when the dam burst. And they have found another underground cavern, the exact same size and shape that Basberg was in, but with nothing in it yet. They've been plagiarized. And that's where most of the former Basburgians now reside. See, 
this is a gift because now instead of us having this endless debate whether it's spelled Bassberg or Bazberg with a Z, it's both. Yeah, just first and second. They decided, hey, the second one, it wasn't cool enough. We need a Z in there. <laughs> second bite of that apple, baby. <laughs> Zad, a six. Okay. Something small but noticeable is destroyed. What is it? And who or what destroyed it? I am reading a rule real quick because I am going to maybe both do that prompt but also take a focused situation. So, the prompt for sea and ocean. Oh, sorry, not the prompt. The. So, the text for sea and omen. Here the player may gesture at a future possibility. An omen may be the classic type a comet or a spell gone awry or something that points at the materiality of the world, a hungry animal in in from a famine in the countryside or the heir to the throne that sickens ahead of a coup. This is a ca- chance to set things in motion. The player narrates what is seen by who and how it is perceived by those who hear the news. So, out before the murder of the bridge caller, where the river ended and disappeared, there was that memorial sort of like that that rock slide that was functionally absorbing all the water of the river and a number of weapons whose brazen lineages had been lost were collected there and made into a sort of a strange bridge not a terribly functional bridge but hey you know if you need to get from one end of the river to the other it would do it yeah go across the knife way it's totally safe and normal yeah, just take the knife away. It's all good. It's just a question how bad do you want to cross the river? <laughs> well, and like kids would do it all the fucking time. Because it's like, it's just you got to watch your footing. Yeah, just get really thick boots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and once the river then swelled up in this area, started to become a marsh, because that was a raised area that was partially reinforced, it became one of the only solid roads that remained through the marshlands one of the things that as people started making flat bottom boats or you needed to know locals in order to even navigate the area the knife bridge was the easiest way to get from one place to another or the surest place to get to went from one place to another and there are two children that are playing out on the knife way and their parents or one of their parents who's a gray folk comes out to collect them because it is dangerous and you don't want to be out on the swamp. And suddenly, something that is a little bit green and a little bit bronze pops up and floating in the marsh, not far from the knife way, is a statue that has a face that is completely worn flat and carved over and covered with initials, but it is of a man riding a very, very tall lizard with very, very gangly feet. And it emerges and crests and then bobs up and down. And this is obviously very strange. And the gray folk that is collecting the two children sees this and takes a look around in that way that adults do to say, what the f- are y'all seeing this? and manages to see the figure in black on the far end of the knife way. Oh, sick, he's black. (laughs) Could be. The figure (laughs) in black on the far end of the knife way and is able to dodge out of the way of a crossbow bolt and narrowly avoid an assassination, an attempt on, on their life. Collects up the two kids, makes it back home safe, and from time to time when you see the old man on the lizard pop up in the swamp you know it's time to maybe go to ground Uh, so uh, that old memorial to the final expulsion of the the last escape from Fort Lanadia is no longer however the Empire is becoming more directly active in the region. And the region is fighting back. To me, 
old man lizard. That old man lizard. Yeah, that's so works because it's because I heard oh men lizard and I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> And still, <laughs> no one knows what happened to the Zinnikostovich. Just disappeared no. one day. No, they definitely died 100%. I definitely remembered the name Zinnikostovich. <laughs> I, I forgot he just, like, vanished. I thought he was, yeah. like, fully... I thought he was, like, fully murked. Just gone. Well... Well, vampires known for staying dead. Yeah, really. Leaving that up to the audience, because also, like, he's hard to kill, but I just... There were signs of a struggle, and he and all of his kids have just disappeared. Yeah, I made him to go away. I remember that. <laughs> no, I just fully forgot he wasn't uh, viciously murdered. <laughs> or was he? I guess we'll have to find out in the future. Who knows? He's just a funny little missing man. You know who might know? Hey, Ben, what's your problem? <laughs> True. Oh! <laughs> An eight. Someone or a group of people comes to our place. Who are they and why Why have they come? Do they bring anything with them? It's not Vladislav. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. You literally just foreshadowed something else that you could easily do very heavily. <laughs> I, unlike weaker folk, <laughs> do not always go towards the foreshadowing. <laughs> I do not take the apple that is offered. I learned from God. <laughs> well, wait, we've learned from God. That's our tagline. We've we did from it. God. <laughs> Ship it and rip it. I'm actually really interested in literally a bunch of travelers, perhaps refugees from well outside of the valley potentially from like the other side of like a mountain range far from the undying empire trying to escape a bad situation and getting trapped in the freaking marsh <laughs> and roped into this war oh no yeah I, that makes sense like a bunch of wagons there there you're not getting through the marsh there's no way their information is years, maybe a couple of decades old. Oh, yeah, you can cross the bridge there. Yeah, and they were like, it, where's the bridge? There's just a bunch to of knives. We <laughs> had a bridge in so long. I haven't had a bridge in 900 years. What do you mean? They thought there'd be a way across, and now they're just stuck. They're stuck in, in the Bronze Hollow Swamp. The, bron the Zalo Marsh, the Zalo Bog, and, and there they are. We're not calling it Bogberg. He's still on the bench. Bogberg? We're not calling it Bogberg. No. Nope. Executive veto. No. Um, come I, on. <laughs> That's great improv, guys. We can't just put Berg at the end of everything. Watch Hi, me. I'm your host, Benjamin Berg. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. The, Rob, the B and Rob B rolling does stand for Berg. Berg. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rob Berg rolling. <laughs> does have a weirdly good flow to it. I'm going to break frame here. I'm going to do something interesting. Okay. Finally. Rude. <laughs> I trusted you. <laughs> I'm going to go around the circle and everyone name one thing about these people. Uh oh, mm, I like it. So we'll start with whoever wants to start and then we'll go around the circle. What are these people like? One thing about them. They're cats. They're cat people. <laughs> That's not it. That's not it. Cut that one. I like the idea <laughs> that these people who have come here, their like idea of living in a place is they where they came from were very in touch with the land around them and lived very like harmoniously and so that's like their instinct when it comes to the environment around them they like oh. to respect nature live harmoniously with it whenever possible you love to see that this is a nightmare for them oops ah! is it we really did it again bad? No, I don't know that this would be a nightmare for them because if they if they generally appreciate 
and are ready to do the work to live in a place, which is quite frankly something that most people outside of the Grey Folk have not had the patience to do in this place ever. They've just been yeah. like, no, we're just going to manage the symptoms of this curse that we have instead of embracing it. I think that these people will do rather well. Hmm. I think that yeah, they will cause... once they can deal with the cut cumbers. Yeah, the cut cumbers what? are a big one. You... <laughs> what did you just say? The cut cumbers. The cucumbers that cut you. <laughs> also the flail bushes. I think we should just move on. We okay. need to stop bringing in really bad names into the canon. We do. We really do. Anyways, I'm actually going to I'm going to write that in. As a rule, these people that come in are exceedingly optimistic. Hmm? They are optimistic about the prospects. Shockingly optimistic. Yeah. It's like, bro, you're so dumb. <laughs> powerful oh they're powerful oh they're powerful okay. like they have like innate magics yeah they have really strong magic it may not have been enough to help them there but maybe here powerful is there a specific kind of magic they're talented in like but the description so far i feel like they're druidic yeah they're very druidic yeah very very nature magic i like it leaving open leaving it open too they're just powerful magically and we'll figure out what that means later <laughs> Okay. Some of it probably manifests more through nature, but that's just because they're living in tune with nature, but they can do other things, too. I like it. So, because we've established that they're refugees and they have powerful innate magic, it could be they're refugees because of their innate magic, sort of like a X-Men situation. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I, I think thematically it'd be nice if they had a similar background to the brazen and the gray folk where you know their nation went hey you're really powerful we're gonna conscript you now but then these guys went no goodbye <laughs> mm. these are the people whose ancestors didn't use too much magic and everyone else kind of did where they came from you know where they're from no one is as innately powerful as these guys are for whatever reason Mm -hmm. And they went, hey, we're going to, like, get all these powerful druids in our military. And all of them went, no, goodbye. Hopped in the wagons and hit the dusty yep. trail. Hopped in the mm -hmm. wagons and left. Because they didn't want to Then they beat the and just like, you understand. Yeah, the brazens are like, and we chose to fight. And they're like, we chose to run. No, yeah, and the brazens are like, oh, so you, so you... D joined with them clearly how did why did that not work out and they're like what well, <laughs> wait <laughs> time out so i think they have a lot to talk about i think between the two groups but, but i think that's a cool dynamic that they could have my fun fact is out of their shoulder blades they have prehensile sensory vine oh they're mostly humanoid, but they do have these shoulder blade vines that can be mm -hmm. used to both detect and are just strong enough to, like, move a few pounds each. So hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah. Plant people. Yeah. They're vaguely plantoid, maybe even slightly photosynthetic. Mm. I was thinking just straight up plant people. Actually walking plants. Like, that man's a cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I feel like they've got to all be a pretty similar amount of, similar kind yeah. of plant. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> They're a bunch yeah. of pricks. <laughs> ah, got em. Yeah. Don't listen to old man cactus. It's just a prick. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some of them have, like, the, like, viney tentacles. Maybe some the, of them have, the like, barky skin. Plant. Maybe there's like different aspects of plantness to them, but they're still humanoid yeah. shaped. Yes. But like I'm typing down plant people hybrids. So yeah. another shot in the dark is um because they love nature we've established and they're powerful, magic, whatever's. What do they have like a symbiotic relationship with some kind of plant? Like it lives in their body mm -hmm. and or something. Therefore the vines. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. If you were going to be like a warrior, you might just graft bark to your skin and mm -hmm. like have mm -hmm. that sort of relationship with trees. Yeah. 
which will get really fucky with all the uh -oh. trees that have swords in them here. <laughs> yeah, this is a powder keg. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be fun times, but my thought was, what if the, the tendrils coming out of the shoulders, that is the sign of how powerful they are. So maybe at first they hide them, and then she's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I got these, like, yeah, just just ignore them. They're perfectly normal. Like, someone walks in, someone's using one to grab something off of a shelf. The oldest and wisest are straight up, like, Doc Ocken it out here. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> sick, though. Oh, I love that's so it. so cool. The really powerful ones are just like a full plant at this point. Like it's yeah. like a full plant yeah. person walking around. And I, I like that, like the idea of like grafting plants under yourself. Like these are people who their ancestors and these people all just kind of do it for the vine. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I made That's a dick joke not even an hour ago, and I feel like I'm forgiven now. Yeah, yeah, there's always a new low. Don't worry. And I, that's what I'm here for. We can. We can that's right, sick. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta save this bit. Their patriarch is called the Old Green Sage, and he literally covered in moss with like the green, with the gray green beard, but the moss growing in it. And he literally, like, the tentacles lift him up and walk him around. He mm. is just like a mass of them. Mm. Or. They carry him on one of those like carts. One of the you put him on your shoulder and you can't like he's a palanquin. Yeah, yeah. Other thought? He carries himself on the palanquin with all the vines. Yeah. Oh, like, so they wrap around under yeah. and then they grasp the trees and so he's like moving himself <sighs> along uh, the tree This guy branches. is. This guy yeah, is so yes. cool. <laughs> I'd play that guy in a video game. Like I'd play I know, that guy. I love him. <laughs> He'd be my main in a fighting game. <laughs> another thought now mm -hmm. since they're so in tune with nature would they be some of the only outsiders that the trees don't try and murder my other thought is it's just like the one person who's really good with a angry cat where like the cat is like clawing at everybody and then the, like this one person goes up and then they try and like stop that and they it, it just does Oh, and the it's one of the stops. young ones. Like an absolutely rabid, like foaming at the mouth, wild cat. It's like, oh, cute baby. Oh, they're that guy. And then all of a sudden, this sword tree loves this young plant person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What are we going to call them? What are these What are these people called? We'll have to find that out later. Yes. Uh, true. Verdant. Mm. Verdant is an easy one. Green Walkers was my first instinct. Green Walkers. I mean, the question is, what do they call themselves? But what the fuck would everyone else call them? Because that would be, they would have for sure two different names, I think. Like, oh, for yeah. Sure. Well, they're, they're probably, I mean, they're probably called Vine Walkers or something outside of themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. But internally, I'm thinking, okay, so Verdant. So maybe they're like, they call themselves the Verdrine. Verdrine's pretty good. Verdrine. Love it. So they're vine walkers or the Verdrine for themselves. The Verdrine. Uh, might I propose Thorn Walker? Thorn Walkers. Love it. I feel like Vine Walker's better. No, that's fine. I think maybe they're they're warriors. People call them Thorn Walkers. Like oh, a yeah. Vine Walker is like one of them, and then they call like the warriors Thorn Walkers. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I'm just throwing out names. You don't have to take mine. No, you're good. But let's find out how they actually interact with this new terrain, which is actively hostile and may or may not respond to their, mm -hmm. you know, their their connection. Because, like, the, the Browns Hollow Valley is very pissed that people... True. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Bree, your prompt is a three. Oh, no. Bree... A new style, fad, or devotion sweeps our place. What is it? Who cares about it? Ah, heck. <laughs> the kids are listening to the moss jazz. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Well, so kind of my thought is, this whole area has been all about travel god or the goddess of peace in whatever sort of version she existed. What if the Verdrain have a very powerful connection to a nature god that these people have never heard of? And since we're in this really messed up, kind of slightly very hostile area, what if people think maybe we've been neglecting 
the goddess of nature here, and it could be the same goddess of nature, we don't know, they don't... <laughs> they worship a god of concept and assume they get the name right, <laughs> and hope the god knows what they're talking about. <laughs> we'll have another episode for god stuff. Yeah, yeah so what if there becomes the a new focus of worshipping the goddess of nature and trying to befriend nature when the tree is actively trying to shish kebab you with the spear. I love that. Yeah, because like as we established before, like for some people that want to become a brazen, sometimes their weapon is like being used by those like carnivorous trees or like or like an animal. Those animals we've established can use swords or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like the gray folk are really into this. I feel like maybe the brazen some of the brazen are probably really into this, especially mm -hmm. the tarnished. I'll bet mm -hmm. there is a militant wing of the brazen that is really pissed off about this. Yeah, like yeah. Big dislike. The brazen are are really invested in a very literal way to the traditions of this region. The traditions of this region is the only reason the brazen exists. So kind of that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I feel like the brazen might not be fully in on the Verdrine because like we were saying, the Verdrine might be able to like convince the plants to let them use the weapons they've stolen, which means the Verdrine now found a loophole to using brazen stuff, maybe? And they're the only contender to the br brazen's kind of dominance of this region. Right, too. yeah. Mm -hmm. The brazen, I think specifically what was said uh, is going back to that initial story that prompted the first like taking up the spears mm -hmm. initially the story that the brazen tell is that they are the true and sole rulers of the of the zalo marsh and of this land and everybody else is only there under their auspices and so i could imagine they're not super into like my guess is that the Verdrine, the this the, the sick guy who carries himself around by his vines, had to actually go and kiss the ring. Had to go to the beer mm. hall. It's been a hundred <clears throat> years. I don't know if Slayer and Scion and whatnot, whoever's still running it, who yeah. the current Marathonian is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are there, and they're there tenuously, and some of the rowdier brazen are not going to be happy about this. Yeah, I definitely think there's like a... What's the word I forgot? Some tension. Yeah, tension. Um, you know, you know, you know, modern day US politics where people have um, opinions on people coming from places to our place. So I imagine that's a thing. Yeah, like xenophobia kind of. That's not... Yeah. Okay, that's xenophobia. The word xenophobia. I also yeah. think the Verdrine maybe aren't helping their case too much because I think... I think they're very lofty and they're very slow mm. to act and they're I, I agree like oh why don't you just do this yeah. Mm. yeah so when they originally pitched that I completely forgot that the wolves were all sorting their own swords so I picture them with the Verdrine of tame for those sword wolves Could be. Yeah. like I can see a Verdrine like yeah this is my wolf who has your family's sword and you can't <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this your family's sword in this, this wolf? This is my family's sword. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's now this wolf's oh, family's sword. sword. Yeah. That sucks for you. The Verdrine will be like, well, if you wish to retrieve the sword from the from the spear tree, why do you not simply connect to it emotionally using mm -hmm. your shoulder binds? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't have shoulder binds. Okay, but so what you're going to do, you're going to want to connect with the natural world and grow shoulder binds. Shoulder binds. <laughs> Um, but also, I imagine there's a few people, because the whole thing was, you know, the whole thing with the travel goddess is what led to all of this, right? So, I imagine to some people who are, like, really traditionalist around here, yeah, we prayed to the goddess of travel. These are for travelers. Oh. Right? So, yeah. so the, the, like, maybe, like, the traditionalists are like, no, 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 these are our friends. Stop being dicks. This whole thing was because we didn't adhere to the laws of the travel god a thousand years ago. A thousand travel years ago. Travel god brought them yeah. here for a reason. We should accept them yeah. in kind. The so, question is, how big of a faction that is? Is that like 12 dudes in a corner going like, okay, maybe chill out? What it sounds like 
given the prompt is is there's a new fashion the fashion is towards spirituality mm, yeah. the thing that it is fashionable to be is to almost retreat even further into your camp into your set ideology of what like, your specific spiritual backbone is and that's the general thing now this means a lot of some people are getting into Berdreen mysticism some people are getting into or people are exploring these new or resurrecting these old practices you start seeing people going around the fucking swamp wearing boots wearing bells on their left shoe Again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I dig this. And I think you start to get some like Saint Aquinas style religious philosophers who are like going into the old travel texts. And this is where mm -hmm. you get a group of people living in this area that are coming up and they're saying, no, 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 no. This is totally within the tenets of the travel god. This is, mm -hmm. this hath been spake, you, you yeah. dumbasses. <clears throat> like, we got to be cool with the Verdreen. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's a rival, there's a rival somebody who's more an adherent to the nature god who's just like no these people need to go or else they're going to be cursed yeah mm, true this or nature there's... it's not not this nature y'all uh, uh, any other nature would be great for you yeah no like you, you i hope the best for you but like honestly for your safety go somewhere else <laughs> yeah this I'm place sure there's Stop. Please stop commuting with the battle axe trait. Please stop <laughs> yeah. commuting. And, but then the good, good old moss beard over here is like, we can save them. I can fix him. <laughs> <laughs> we can heal this. Like, it's almost like there's a battle between the different religious philosophies to see whose <sighs> god is going to fix this place first. Maybe if we believe hard enough. Ironically enough, though, I think one thing is true about this era, this this however long this lasts of tension, not much violence. Mm -hmm. Very few people are tempted to get into open violence with each other for various reasons. Yeah, it's a battle of philosophies. I think overall, like, it's a pretty prosperous time. Mm -hmm. Because the Verdreen... They probably brought a whole bunch of like advanced because with their magic on alone and then magic plus all the advancements they have of probably of like food getting rid of all these monsters either through taming them or if they must killing them oh, but like no. they probably like made this place a lot better zad's about to ruin it for everyone zad go ruin it oh ruin well it. because the um <laughs> The Empire obviously requires the tithe of all of the regions within mm -hmm. its, with under the auspices of the Undying King. And because the mood of the people who live here controls the weather, it's been pretty gray for about, let's say, 800 years. Uh, mm. Yeah, true. Which means that, yeah, sure, they're able to get some crops out, but they're basically subsistence farming until all of a sudden these folks show up and now there's a bunch of food and... Yeah. There's one reason that they've basically been able to get away by shipping a bunch of brazen off to the Empire for, what, 300 years now? All they were good for. Mm -hmm. And that's Until because it was now. all they were good for. Because now the people that showed up who can also probably control the weather. Or start planting things that'll do better mm -hmm. in the yeah. environment as it exists. I think we, like, accidentally made, like, a really cool symbiosis between these two people. It's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. That's when you just start hiding all the surplus crops of New Bathburg. Um, like we also established there's underground tunnels that, that go through at least most of the Empire here. Mm -hmm. So they could hide the food. We got New Bathburg. We could just, like, stockpile shit in. Did we? Oh, I love this place. <laughs> this is so. This is such a fun. This area. is a cool place. Yeah. yeah. Well, I gotta burn down the empire eventually. It's gonna be great. Lex, it's about to get cooler because it's your turn. Uh oh, yeah. A seven. Hmm. Hmm. A forgotten aspect to our place is recovered. What is it? A corner? A basement? A hidden garden? Hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something that we've referenced previous. I, I feel like we can just sort of say we find something from God knows how long ago. I mean, we didn't start at the beginning of time, so... Yeah, we did not start this fire. Except for the way that we literally did. <laughs> we've certainly been stoking it! <laughs> so there's a lot of things I could do here, right? I could say that, like, 
it's been so long without the funny magic bridge that no one cares anymore and now it's back i could always do that so it's forgotten and is rediscovered that's that's of the first option i could say because all the spiritualism going on we could find uh, like a temple we all forgot about you know there's a lot of options here i'm trying to decide well, we have a lot more farming going on, so who knows what the farmers discovered when they were digging. Yeah, the farmers could find, like, a whole other sect of weapons that we forgot about and more brazen or something. There's so many... Th we made a cool place with options, okay? <laughs> <laughs> a nuke with a jet engine, or with a uh, sublight um, a sublight warp engine bubbles up to the surface, and all of a sudden, this is, in fact, a post-post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> a friendly bear that everyone forgot. And when you look, and then if you look away, it's gone, you forget it. <laughs> so, I do know a thing that everyone's forgotten about that we could rediscover. Yeah. <laughs> Those who left on the bridge like mm -hmm. 800 years ago. <gasps> yes! Yeah! Ah! Lex! Yes! Thank you. I'm so, yes. so curious about these people. I think they've been on a wee bit of an adventure of their own, <laughs> which is something we'll tell in another uh, episode somewhere, probably. But I think maybe they're also now, because the whole thing was they became refugees, left, and then maybe something happened and went, maybe we return back to our ancestral home. Something's gone bad and we want to come home. And the question is, did they walk home or did the bridge show up and bring them home? That's what I'm curious about. I think that's your question and answer. But I also like the idea, because right now we have gray folk who are like partially animalistic. We have the Fazbergians who are basically sim the tarnished, which are similar to gray folk, and then Brazen who are have like the bronze eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I like the idea that other than the Empire people who have moved here, these are like the only other like quote unquote normal looking yeah, like yeah. humanoid. Like these are the only like just fully human, human people and elf and like whatever fantasy ancestries we want to say i think what happened is the bridge does bring them back and i think the bridge stays Ooh. oh well, i think the bridge is gonna stay <laughs> because like like we mentioned like this place has gotten really good it's just like peaceful and like if the goddess of travel, the whole thing was, I brought you all here to benefit from the gifts of this land, and now they are. So maybe there's some forgiveness going on, and the bridge is like, okay. This bridge is a sign that maybe, maybe we're cool now. Oh no, you guys. Oh my god. 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 Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to set some. I'm going to set some. No, I'm not good. Uh huh. I am going to set you, I'm going to set us up something so tasty right now. Okay. These people that are coming back on the bridge are the original people that left. Okay. Uh, they okay. were gone. Mm -hmm. They were taken somewhere. Mm -hmm. They have no idea where they were. Yes. And they were there for one year before they were called back to the bridge. And all of a sudden it's a thousand <laughs> years in the future. All so, right, Ben. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I like it. I, you, you sold me. Hey, we're back. What the? <laughs> so I did have the thought that they, that they had no idea where they were. I did have that thought, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that I was thinking of was, this is if we don't go with the time travel thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. My idea was over the generations, they got rid of the curse. Oh. And now they're just guys. Like, they're just people. Like, like Rob was saying. I mean, I also like the idea, though, that maybe wherever they went and that the mm -hmm. year they spent there, they came back with no curse. Right. But, but they've built, they built up their community on the bridge. Mm -hmm. So now you've got, like, the bridge is there. Right. Like, they've oh, got a no, whole year's worth of infrastructure on the bridge. Yeah. Oh. They live so on the there's bridge. There's now a city on the bridge. So now there's Bridgeburg. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> You can't. You can't. Okay, all right, fine. Bridgeton. Bridgerton. That's what they call it. Bridgerton. No. Oh, it's, it's, it's Overton. It's more. Uh, Overton's better. Overton? I like Overton. 
You've got your bridge tin. You've got your bridger tin. This is, in fact, the bridgest tin of them all. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Beautiful. That's staying in. No, but... Okay. Lex is so pissed right now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I guess we can decide what happened to them while they were gone, but... I like the idea of leaving that. Was there a time jump, or it, did this happen over generations? Lex, you are... It's your card, you should try mm, Your card. I think I want to go generations because that means there's mm -hmm. more things that could have happened. Okay. In their funny little okay. weird land they were at. Living on a bridge. Was, living on a bridge. Did the bridge move? I'm sure over generations they probably expanded out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like you know, they they were able to set up like a thing, but like they're but only the bridge, bridge came back. Yeah, the 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 well, bridge is for the leadership lives on the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe they were having some big ceremony. How many were there? Did the bridge disappear? Was it like hundreds or was it like twenty people? We didn't establish that. It would be enough for a small. Uh, it'd be a, enough for a small settlement to survive. But I, I like the idea that only the bridge and that everything that was on the bridge just came back. Mm -hmm. That means not everyone came back. Oh no! Potentially. Oh my. <laughs> oh no! We'll see. That means that there's this weird city with with a giant gap between it and a weird place. Oh, uh, we might be able to visit. Oh, shucks. I hate that. Oh, back somewhere there's a people with a bridge-shaped hole in their heart. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one one more question, though. Okay. Is the bridge now a functional bridge again, or is it just the place where some people live and the bridge has nothing to do with being a bridge anymore? I feel like it gets you from one side of the swamp to the other. You can get through the swamp more easily in a lot of other ways. And but like, you know, there's a main thoroughfare that goes through the that goes through the the town on the bridge. I figured that for there to be a town on our bridge and people can still cross it, that's a big fucking bridge. I also like the idea that like they built up, right? So mm. they're like up against the like sides of the bridge. Maybe the bridge grew with the with the with the town. It's probably like like quite a bit wider. Yeah, and smaller. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's just this giant marble superstructure mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can cross through. Is it a, a normal size bridge? And to get across, you have to like go through someone's living room, you know? Or <laughs> that's the... <laughs> They've had a thousand years. I'll bet they've. I'll bet they've built this sucker out. I'll bet yeah. it's mm -hmm. expanded the bridge. I like right. that. Yeah, like underneath into the sides. But and you could probably go around. You can go through. Like the people probably. Yeah, I was always curious about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's they have a like subway. A That's how you go through. You go through the bridge. You don't go over the bridge. They have a little like subway that goes through the bridge because they live on top of it. They yeah. have invented trains. No. No, oh, but like a subway tunnel. It's just a tunnel through the like. Listen, yeah. of the bridge. when we get to that point, you can start that. It'll probably be about a six, uh, six on the die for that project. You get to do one every turn. <laughs> All right, Zad. Speaking of a six, I got you another six. Are you ready? Ooh, fun. A natural or architectural disaster strikes with no warning, leaving something in ruins. What was the oh. disaster? Oh, oh come boy. on. Everything was looking great. Yeah, and we were get, we were getting away from our eldritch roots. Forget curse, embrace bridge. Once more into the bridge. I'm not gonna do that to the bridge, folks. We like the bridge, folks. I think everyone agrees. Right now. <laughs> no, I think, think that I read it. Oh no, no, Zad's gonna destroy the bridge. Oh god. Because my brain went, hey guys, like, hey guys, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Architectural disaster and the whole like brazen beer hall small small Ooh. community that's that's grown up. There was a religious dispute and the whole fucking thing caught fire. Mm. Just a small squabble turned into a considerably larger one. And over the centuries, like, the place has mellowed out some. The original hall is now mostly an administrative building. And a lot of the partying and carousing has gone to the outer area. But 
a lot of records were lost. A number of people disappeared, people who were important to the command structure of the Brazen, and ensuring that the tithe was sent to the Emperor, the Empire on time, a lot of that got crippled when the Beer Hall Districts burned. Which is not, like, not the hugest deal. The Empire's just sending down a few administrators in order to assess the situation. Yeah, you just and have to send a few people to audit everything. Yeah, and sure coming in for an audit. Okay. So, yeah. I think I'm cool with the Beer Hall being destroyed, because, like, if we've started to give it, like, a weird alt-right vibe going on with the brazen in the Beer Hall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's... To me, the part of the brazen that goes off to fight for the Empire, they are kind of that, like, weird alt-right, completely mm-hmm. chuds. Mm-hmm. And I have been looking, I've been consciously trying to find opportunities to separate other brazen off from that, to find, like, mm-hmm. that more pure ideology, that original ideology of we are meant to be defending our home our home isn't the empire right our home is our home and like we get a little bit of that Mm. with the like there's space for that with the river tarnished blades but i really want some of that with not the bassbergian brazen but with the there's always been this undercurrent Mm -hmm. of brazen that we're never going to go and fight for the empire Mm -hmm. there just always happened to be enough brazen to send Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you were a conscientious objector of, of the Brazens, you would... But what were you going to do? Go and fight your brothers? Mm. Go fight your siblings over a difference in ideology? And mm-hmm. that might be part of what happened. Mm. Yeah. But I do want to say, because we did decide before, there's a hard cap to how many Brazen there can be, because mm-hmm. there's how many weapons. I do think at this point, we've reached the cap probably minus the ones taken by nature mm-hmm. well that's the thing i think i think we weren't about to hit the cap and then everyone our, our, all, all the new people showed up and started like becoming friends with the like trees and, and animals and now we're we're at the cap yeah and also like i definitely think because we, we made it to an exactly thousand i think if we continued beyond that we start seeing Verdrine and Brazen ha- like having families together, which would lead to how instead of ha- rather having having a family weapon, you have your family blood axe tree. You know, <laughs> we have the sentry that could still happen. True, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, yeah. We, if we keep going forward, I, I think we'll probably see the Brazen start to cool it because we're probably not at the hard limit, but there are severe diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. Once you have looted thousands and thousands of weapons over the course of a millennium, like, it's not that there aren't any weapons whatsoever left. It's just really hard to find one. And it's not worth the effort. Mm -hmm. You can get more brazen if you really put some work in, but the effort it takes to finding one brazen is equivalent now to the effort it took to find a hundred even like at that point you might as well just train like a squad of normal yeah, soldiers yeah and there's probably still like psychos who uh still make pil- pilgr- pilgrimages out just to see if a weapon calls to them you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah i also like the idea that like the natural disaster aspect of this is we're fully in like a marsh buildings burning down is not heard of right mm. like the idea of like you're in one of the like wettest environments possible and you burnt a building down and there's some people that are like oh well the alcohol was like soaked into the floorboards of this place and other people are like no this was a sign this is suspicious yeah. yes i think think there was probably a let it burn moment like they could have stopped it and i think like this is probably like a big turning point politically for the brazen and, and yeah. they probably decided you know what fuck that place that's mm-hmm. there's so mm-hmm. much there's so much born there you know you had Slayer Brazen, and he sucked. You had Scion Brazen, and he was everything that his father was, except worse, because he was bad at it. And mm. then, like, <laughs> Scion had three kids that ended up duking it out and had to arrange a sort of detente between them, but instead, like, it was a Stuart running things, and it's been this extremely messy bloodline of, of people fighting over the title of Marathonian, which, like, mm-hmm. there's credible claims that none of them deserve it anyways because of the bylaws of the runners etc etc it doesn't matter so does it's, runners yeah. exist anymore now that we have 
We're in a swamp. Well, we established the runners like we took that infrastructure and it became like the, empire the secret police of the empire, right? Mm -hmm. Or like spy network or something. Well, there's two branches. There's the empire co-opted a lot of it and have information spread delivery service over land. And also Bassbird took it and started running through the tunnels to mm -hmm. create the resistance network. And like maybe even the current the current brazen, like the current person who had the title or was next in line for the title, or whoever's meant to be ostensibly leading them, was about to get to the point. Like he's the one who eventually said, Okay, no, let it burn. Cause mm. that person is done. Some, I think there had been some sitting out by the brazen and the gray hole just out into the town, out into the wide world to see about, you know, can we start this revolution, gather information, spread information, because we didn't share all of the secrets of how the runners really work. Hmm. And I think now would be a good time for them to start having, like, because it is for a thousand years, it's in general been one or two people in charge and now there's like five distinct groups in this in like this area and this isn't like this definitely isn't like three towns anymore this is now like a city probably this is like three or four towns that have become a, its own city at this point i think it's fitchburg it's port lanadia and the mm -hmm. surrounding areas but one person is in town of, is is in charge of it officially that one mm -hmm. person is Archduke Vladislav Zanakostovich. Uh, he just hasn't put in an appearance in a hundred years. Yeah, but I feel like the people would be like, nah, that sucks. And like, this would be a time to set up like a kind of council situation, I think. This self-governing council, yeah. I will also point out that several hundred years ago, a vampire married into this family. Yes. So that bloodline is probably spread around quite a bit, and Lanavi is probably still around somewhere, potentially. Which is a thing that, when I didn't know that she was a vampire, and I said the first brazen was someone who claimed to be descended of Lanadia, who used the same name. If that was the same Lanadia, who's just been pretending to be a new person oh. throughout the centuries, and she started the brazen, that's kind of sick. That's kind of fucking <laughs> sick. I like that. Kind of sick. That's a good theory. I like it too. Yeah, maybe. But hey, no one can prove it. Okay. Rob, did I skip you? You fully did, and it's okay. Hey, no, it's no, fine. Okay. No. I get you now. Here, I get if you now. hadn't, we wouldn't have gotten that. So. That was really cool. Yeah. No, I got yeah. you now. I'll get you right now. You have a two. You're going to love this, Rob. Okay. A breakthrough moment in technology, arts, politics, philosophy, or daily life tips the scales of a power balance. What was this breakthrough? How does it play out in society? Okay. Which right. we live in one of those. You know what? We we kind of do. I'm so excited. I swear to God, these cards are prophetic. I feel like half the time we pull one, it's ready, like it's ready for the exact setup. Mm -hmm. that we like, oh. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. So we've had this curse right and and the curse is when people are getting violent you start to get flashbacks of the people who died in that first war mm -hmm. right and we've established that whatever killed that that weapon like whoever that person's weapon is now cursed and you can pick it up and then like animals can pick it up and and plants can pick it up and so the verdrine have been working with the like natural elements of this land for so long and they they realize like you know People in these uh, people can talk to like plants and animals with magic, right? Mm -hmm. And plants and animals have a certain level of intelligence, even without magic. Now, mm -hmm. take a animal or plant with its own intelligence, and now add the memory of a person who died in a war inside of them. If you could just maybe unlock some of that intelligence, some of that personality. Or that animal, all of a sudden, don't they become a little more intelligent? Don't they now become capable of performing tasks? So these, like, sword trees and animals, the Verdrine have figured out how to essentially not awaken them fully into, like, being sapient, but, like, they can, like, 
I imagine now basically these like sword trees and, and plants just walking around doing tasks or if need be it's already a massive tree with an axe on it it can defend itself and mm-hmm. you right so it's 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 almost like plant robots of just like these natural constructs using both their natural intelligence and like an aspect of these like people long gone able to just walk around and do things so we now have plant guardians and animals yeah. that can be saboteurs so i do think because we were talking about before about like yeah so your family's sword is in the hands of that wolf who is using a sword now or whatever so imagine with these things combined your family who didn't have a weapon now has a cool pet dog with a sword yeah so there's they're, they're no longer there's brazen it was already a wolf who could use a sword it wasn't that hard to teach it how to like plow a field and defend yeah. you right like you know, I'm imagining the powers of brazen applying to these creatures and plants mm-hmm. so rather than like pulling your weapon out of thin air you're summoning a funny wolf <laughs> dog I mean wolf, <laughs> wolf dog you could also have the wolves and maybe like other smaller animals and somehow God didn't do it because I'm sure there are a bunch of knives laying around so you have squirrels with knives that can go and like steal things from the enemy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's for sure like a knife squirrel that would make a great spy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the... you now have a whole new level of espionage and sabotage. God. The runners have leveled up, I think. <laughs> You have a horse that's going around stealing from nobles just with a look of oh. say something, no one will ever believe you. And a funny little mace horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, like, there's 100% crocodiles now. So oh, yeah. do with that as you will. So I feel like we've made this weird central community where the main theme is people magically attaching plants and or weapons to stuff. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Grafting feels like a very apt word. Yeah. You, either you become more plant or you make the plant more weapon. So it's, it's... I imagine you can now, if with the animals that wield weapons, you can graft plants to those. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The grossest monstrosities <laughs> in the world. It's like all interchangeable at this point, mm-hmm. right? The Verdrine could already, like, mesh plant in person, and plant and animal could already mesh with these weapons, and people could already mesh with these weapons, and so it was just those, like, two missing links that the Verdrine mm-hmm. and the Brazen were able to fit together, that it's all now linked. We have reached the point of, this is our home. I dare you to come and take it. Literally, yes. Yeah. I dare you. And you know what's really interesting is is the earliest iterations of the curse when people like became rage monsters, it was like kinda like this, but now the people are doing it on purpose. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they understand. Because the hunters at the very start, when they lost themselves, they became more animal like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there were animals who got these weapons. Some of those animals could have just been hunters who fully devolved into animals. We don't know. Rude. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. It's all the same thing. Wolf we'll fucks up. Great grandpa, is that you? <laughs> this place is fucking wild, and I love it. <laughs> Nature already responded to people. The weather follows the population's yeah. mood. Like, yep, 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 like, yep. This feels like the logical conclusion, not like. If the gods that we've established are real, I feel like the god of peace looked down at them and went, what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah, she's just like, well, Mm. I didn't see that twin coming, but it works. Yo, I left for 200 years. (laughs) What happened? Incredible. All right, Benjamin. What's the next prompt? What you got? I have drawn the final 10. (laughs) Oh! Let's go! I cannot think of a more perfect time to have a 10, honestly. Mm-hmm. At the conclusion of what is essentially this entire, like, civilization born on a cursed land that eventually comes full circle and 
through attempting to embrace this curse in various flawed ways, eventually reaches harmony with both the curse, the land, and themselves, reaches a level of, and reaches a level of prosperity where they're capable of pushing this undying empire out mm -hmm. through literally what I imagine is essentially the exact opposite energy. This is a place of radical life now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got some night elf shit going on, you know? Vampires? Maybe not in this world, but generally, one of the things vampires aren't able to fuck with? Running water. True. That is, in general, a thing. It depends on what we want to do with our vampires. But yes, that is a that is a thing. Maybe, like, when we run Thousand Year Vampire, we can decide vampire rules. Mm -hmm. Which now we have to run Thousand Year Vampire. Oh, yeah. no. Well, I mean, that was kind Don't of a given. Me... Oh, oh, no, vampires. Oh, God, you, you've, you've twisted my arm. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> Vendor. What's, what's, the, what's the prompt? Are you going to roll for it, or are you going to choose the um, hopeful one that I know is on there? The very first one is the gardens are planted, the work has been done, and now we wait. What was planted, and what are we waiting for? I think that's very obvious that I want to do that one. <laughs> uh -huh. That's really good. That's a really good cap to this. Yeah. The gardens which are planted are the unification. So for probably 80 years, they were under kind of a council system between like Finchin and Overton and uh, Basberg and like some of these other places. And they finally unite into a single powerful city state and the ultimate symbol of the emergence of this city-state is a giant council meeting that takes place on the Overton Bridge. Might I suggest Council of the Grey? Council of the Grey. Yes. That's sick as fuck. The ultimate symbol of the unification of this place is when the bridge grows out of the bottom of it, this gigantic root system that climbs its way through the Basberg tunnels, lining and gripping around the edges of the tunnel. So you can still access them, you can still move, but now these roots are so deep that you couldn't possibly pull this place out. Mm. This is them saying like, this is our, you'll never pull it out of the ground. The bridge has chosen to show a sign of faith in these people. Yeah. I will never leave again because I couldn't if I wanted to. Yeah, literally, I'm stuck here, guys. Yeah. Please. <laughs> and it's the first day in hundreds of years where the sun breaks through the clouds. The clouds disappeared yeah. in the distance. <laughs> the people that work for the Empire realize, oh, no. I like the mental image of this auditor, right? A walking up to this burnt down beer hall and then just the sun breaks on this is all the same day and <laughs> just dissolves into dust i wonder you know, actually i kind of like the idea of the, the the old beer hall burning down the night before the council meeting the auditor arriving the town is empty when the auditor arrives because everyone's at the party they're dissolving the Great Council, kind of-ish, sort of, mm -hmm. like the way it was before and rebuilding it mm -hmm. anew. Right. And this auditor is, like, going to the beer hall. And he's, they're dissolving the Marathonian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They dissolve the they dissolve the Marathonian, which is the, the authoritarian ruler, and instead switch to a five-person council. And the auditor is, is swinging by the beer hall. He doesn't know it burnt down. And he's, like, in rain stuff. And then, like, the rain stops, and the sun comes out, and he like, looks over at the bridge and sees like the vines like enwrapping it and then like digging into the tunnels and he gets so the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. <laughs> this man with fear in his heart is out of here. There's a saying among people that go and do tax collection and enforcement in the Blood River Bend from the Undying Empire. And basically so you'll have like a young auditor or a young tax collector will complain like oh I got the fucking Basberg assignment <laughs> someone will say like it's a good assignment as long as it doesn't stop raining <laughs> paid out on this image that mysterious figure who has been at every single wedding she's always been in the background no one can really see her 
You can see her clearly now, standing next to someone who looks almost identical. But you know, they're different sides of the same coin. I also like the idea of there is a either a one, one specific member of the count of the council of gray or or a separate figure from the five who's mm -hmm. who has like the ability to like has like a final veto that they can pull out who's called like the flower thrower like like something flower thrower for for hunter gray like <laughs> throwback <laughs> <laughs> wonder if that folk song is ringing from the halls as the one to just like nope fuck this shit also, Zach, you need to read what you typed in chat out loud, because that was really good. We have this Imperial admin auditor who comes in, sees the beer hall burnt down and all of the ash about, and looks over to Overton, sees the bridge grow roots, and the sun comes out and books it, and I don't think he necessarily stays away. He still has a job to do doesn't want to really lose his whole deal over this so comes back with escort explores the area and starts realizing what the fuck's happened to this place since the last time there was uh, imperial administration and says something to the effect of through a combination of a lack of direct oversight and poor administration on all imperial levels from the local to the regional conditions within the Blood River Bend have deteriorated, etc., etc. And the final line that he writes as he's sending off is, to try and take what is not willingly given from the people of Zalo would be as exacting payment from the ground itself. Thank you for listening to Game Woman. Please give us a follow on Twitter at GameWoven, join the Discord, support us on Patreon, and consider leaving us a review on Apple, Spotify, or whatever host you normally use. This week's episode featured me, E.T. Benjamin, at T.T. Benjamin 1 on Twitter. Lex, at CallMeThey on Twitter, that's call underscore me underscore they. Brianna, at Brianna Jeans on Twitter. Zad, at ZadKiel in green, that's D-A-D-K-I-E-L in green on Twitter and Rob at Rob B. Rowling on Twitter.